everyone. We're here at the, the Ranch View High School Culinary Program. It's actually in the Nancy Witten building, right close to the high school. I'm here with our culinary instructor, uh, Yesenia, and she's going to tell you a little bit more about the program and the amazing kids that she has here. I've seen a couple right now. We've done This is our fourth class we've done in two days, and I'm very, very well surprised at how amazing this culinary program is here. Yesenia, tell us a little bit about yourself and about the program. So my name is Chef Gallardo, uh, this is my third year here at Ranch View High School. We are part of the Carrollton Farmers Ranch District and our culinary program is wonderful. We pretty much help students increase their employability, we get them certified, they have lovely guest chefs that come visit, um, they run their own student-led cafe, so just various different activities they get to do to help build themselves, build their knowledge. Um, but yeah, this is our third year of the program with upper level courses. Um, and it's, it's just a wonderful program, and we're really hoping just to keep building it up and going from there. And from my understanding, they're also uh, competing at the World Food Championships this year for the first year, so it's going to be really cool. I'm going to be there for sure just to check them out and maybe assist in any which way I can, so I'm looking forward to this, and I'll bet you this team, this is a winner. Yes. Thank you, Thank you very much. Our shrimp is clean. It's cleaner than what comes out of the ocean. As I mentioned, the ocean, the pollution, the mercury, the plastics, the microplastics that, you know, because the shrimp are bottom feeders. They eat from the bottom. Oil spills, and eventually all that stuff gets eaten. You know, if you got a cruise ship, all that poop and then the shower that goes all into the ocean, right, falls to the bottom, and these bottom feeders, they eat that all. So you got to think, you know, at a certain point. So what we do is revolutionary. So we have two technologies, patent technologies, that allow us to do that. It cleans the water. We don't need no chemicals. We don't need no additives. Nothing. So if you all say, like, you like shrimp, wait until you taste this shrimp. You're going to taste a significant difference. It's firmer, it's more buttery, it's fresh, it doesn't stink. So you're gonna smell like he's gonna grab some shrimp in a minute. If you wanna grab some, give me like a pound of shrimp really quick. And then we'll show it. That's the last little item we need here. And then uh, I'll show you the shrimp. You get a good idea of what it looks like, how clean it really is. Now this shrimp has been frozen. So normally we deliver fresh only. Well, to the consumer, this is what we use foods. A lot of separate restaurants. We do live shipments. So from our facility in Iowa, we have clients in Chicago that sell to the Asian markets because Asia is like fresh, right? Fresh seafood. So when you go to a lot of Asian markets, you see these aquariums, right? With fish, crabs, all kinds of live seafood in there, which you can net out and they can sell. So that's what we do up in that area from our facility in Iowa. We have the big totes. They get filled up with salt water that comes out of our facility. We make our own salt water, shrimp in it, they go in the totes with oxygen, and then we ship, we drive them all the way from Chicago, from Iowa to Chicago and deliver them to the customers that sell them to the Asian markets, the Asian stores for a live shrimp. So they can just really grab their shrimp out of the net and get it live. You can't get the shrimp any fresher than that. And then with our e-commerce, the same thing. We pack them for a pound, heads off, and we sell them by the four pounds. We're gonna change that now a little bit, and it's not cheap, because we're selling about $22 a pound. If you look at Walmart, you're paying six to $7 for a pound, but totally different product. You want all the chemicals or the additives, you want something healthy. So technically, when you're looking at you know restaurants and so on, you're looking around twelve or thirteen dollars a pound for our shrimp because ours is a premium product, right? It's not something, it's not a commodity. It's just totally different. It costs a lot more to grow as well. You got to think this is all inside, it's not go on a boat, get it out, net it out, you know, bring it to land. Totally different ballgame. But think about this: not only shrimp, and you know, you always watch future movies and sci-fi and stuff like that, right? Pretty soon, there's not going to be many of the options left anymore. This is the route we're going to have to go. It's aquaculture and the agriculture part. If you look at, you know, just plants that, that people grow, you know, your vegetables that you get, a lot of that happens outside. That soon is all going to be dark. If you look at Europe, you know, they're, they're, it's very dense, right? So they have like farmhouses and greenhouses. Everything grows in greenhouses. That's another thing that's going to happen. So you have the, the, aqua, the agriculture and then you have the aquaculture. That is going to be the future. And think about the population in the world and how many people the one you need to eat, right? You need your protein. It takes for us to grow the shrimp from about, here we go. Yeah, we're going to look. So, we're still a little frozen. We're going to have to follow them up a little bit. So, this is our product. See how clean the color you see? The heads are still on there. So, we're going to work with each of you guys. We're going to thaw them out a little bit. Can I put you on some water? Thank you. So, we're going to take the heads off. But you can see the heads are a little bit dark, right? They turn black. So when you, when we pull them out of our tanks, it's all clear. So at a certain point, when, the, when you pull them fresh, you keep them in the refrigerator, 
after two days, you're going to start seeing a deterioration in the heads. Because the shrimp, the body, is really all meat, right? So you have that canal that goes through it, but the head is the brain, because we, our heads have a brain, right? But they have also all their organs, everything is in their head. So we have here the body and the head, they have all in their head. So when, when, the, when, the, when they get harvested, right, they die. But kill them through the stomach, right? yeah. So when they're dead, everything starts to deteriorate. That happens with us as well. So that all happens in their head. And that's when you start seeing the black coming out. So that's the deterioration of the heads. When you freeze them like I did for this event, it makes that process go faster. So as soon as you thaw them out, they will already start to turn black. And that's because you freeze them. So that happens. That's why most of the, the shrimp that you buy in the stores are all heads off. There's chichen in the heads, which is the chemical that they use a lot for the medical industry. There's a lot that can be done with that. So there's a lot you can do with the shrimp. I want to eat the tails, but the heads are really well wanted. So in the Asian, in the Asian part of this world, they eat the shrimp complete, head and everything. So they fry them, the heads, they eat them as a delicacy because everything that's inside it, they want that as well. So when people eat lobster, for example, right? They scoop out the inside from the head, which has the organs, the brain, everything in it. So they scoop that out and they eat it. There's a lot of flavor in there. So that's why with the heads and the shell, but most of the heads, is a great way to make stock. So you can make soups, make stock from there. You got your base for sauces, soups, just name it. There's so much you can do with it. You don't have to throw any of this away. You can utilize literally everything from the shrimp. Everybody likes the meat, of course, but think about the rest. There's so much flavor in here. Especially if you were to roast, we don't have the time for that today. But let's say you peel them, you take the shells, you take the head, you roast them a little bit in the oven, get a little roast on them, and then you add the water and you bring it up to a simmer, and then you create your stock, just like you would any other kind of stock. It's like a consomme or a demi, right? You, you roast the bones first, right? You reach all that flavor. You kind of do the same thing with the shrimp heads. So today, we're gonna to do, everybody knows a lobster roll? You ever heard of a lobster roll? Mostly from New England. So they use like a, like a type of hot dog bun, and then they cook the lobster, and then they add certain ingredients to it, which we are gonna do the same, but then we're gonna do it with shrimp. So instead of lobster, we're gonna do it with shrimp. Let's chill down a little bit. We're gonna to toast the buns. You see how fast shrimp cooks? I mean, it's, it's a protein that cooks amazingly fast, just like most other seafood. I'm gonna take the bun really quick. I'll let this gentleman do that. I'll let you and I will we'll start with the sauce. I'm gonna toast on both sides. I'll start with the So he's just gonna to toast the bun in butter. Nothing better than butter. So, right now we're gonna make our sauce, okay? So we have all our ingredients ready. It's not much, it's very simple. You take your mayonnaise. That is key all the way when you're going cooking. So a lot of people, when you put ingredients into a dish, you gotta be able to taste every single ingredient used in the dish. If one ingredient overpowers, you always want really the star to overpower, right? So it's your protein most of the time, your steak, your fish, whatever your main item is, that is the main item that has to have taste. So everything like she mentioned, everything that's added onto it is an addition to enhance the flavor of your main product. But if you have one item in there that overpowers, Let's say I were to do all this and I were to add a uh, crazy thing, curry powder, right? Curry powder to it. And I put so much curry powder in there that my mayonnaise turns really dark yellow and all I taste is curry. Do you think I'm gonna taste all the other stuff? No, right? So that's the key. You gotta be, every item, everything that you put into a dish, you gotta be able to taste and to identify it. If you can't do that, your dish is not right. Because one item overpowers, but Steve really shouldn't be the item that overpowers. It has to be a balance. It's all about balance. You gotta taste every ingredient. That makes the best chef. Balance in the product. Presentation. So, so what we're gonna add, we're gonna add our celery, right? There's all the celery in there. Then we're gonna add 
the red onions, which are white onions, but red onions reduce the whole. Remember, red onions is a key. So make a note, this dish needs the red onions is key. It's less sharper and it's a little bit sweeter and it gives a beautiful color. Remember the scallions, what did I say about the scallions? How am I, how am I going to use those? I'm going to use them in two different ways. Very right, correct. I'm just pressing you. There you go. Right, so, I'm going to put some in the dish. So, when you do this at home, you use the fresh ones. Try to use chimes a little bit. Yeah, taste these. Taste this intention. Like, I promise you, when you taste the shrimp, the shrimp really is the star. Like, it's so, it's so good. Um, so, don't get crazy with your seasonings because you still want to be able to taste yes. the proteins. Right? Just literally a little light salt. The shallots, the green, the, all these things are complementary to the protein. So when you're doing your spices, heat, something hot, is not a flavor. It's just hot. You're going to blind everything else. So Correct. make sure your shrimp is the star. Is that water boiling yet? You're more than welcome to make like an aioli sauce. Yes. Or like a I was going to get with that. To go with it. Yeah. You know, What's that? The Any kind of sauce that you think will complement, you're up? more than welcome to create your own sauce. I like mine just really with sweet chili sauce or soy sauce with some lemon. You're at the right one. I got sweet chili back there. I got soy sauce back there. I got chili back there. I got chili paste back there. You're more than welcome to make like an oil-based sauce for this. Go for it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.